Well, we're back in the garage. Uh, I just put this car up for sale and pretty much same day, it developed a giant hydraulic leak. So these cars, the 750s, and I think a lot of E28s, E24s, they, they don't have a vacuum brake booster. They have a hydraulic brake booster, much like a three quarter ton GM vehicle. Um, basically, you know, that's it. this is your master cylinder. And then back behind it, hard to get, it, it looks like a bigger brake booster. And that's, uh, that's what the pedal connects to. And uh, I've learned, as you can see from the green CHF 11S soaked paper towel, that it is leaking at the seam between the master cylinder and the brake booster, just on the bottom. Um, I had someone push the brake pedal and confirm that it drips. So since it's not dripping brake fluid, I know it's not the master, it's dripping uh, pentosin or pentosin, um, which is the CHF 11S hydraulic fluid. So likely the seal in it is bad. The options are buy a replacement from ATE, which is $555 from FCP Euro, send it out to be rebuilt for about $150, uh, or buy a rebuilt one for, I think it was 250 or 300. Uh, or I'm lucky and it's just the front body seal, which is the most common or the most likely scenario. If that's the case, I should be able to fix it with a dollar and fifty cent O-ring and not have to remove it from the car. I will have to remove the uh, brake master cylinder to get access to it, but I should be able to rebuild it right in the car. So that's what I'm going to try to do first. And then either way, it's going to come out to get replaced or rebuilt. So if I can rebuild it in the car, great. And if not, it's coming out and I'll, uh, I'll get it rebuilt. I did already remove those just to get a little access in there. And I'm going to have to pull some of this stuff out, drain the reservoir on the master, Pop the master off, two bolts, look like 13s, um, get rid of the brake lines, and then have access to it. So this should be a whole thing. All right, so got the adapter out of the way. I couldn't, I, there's a line that goes to the reservoir, uh, this line right here, if it goes to the booster, probably a little pressure line. Couldn't find my little black caps, so plugged a old spark plug boot, and uh, that's working. Now I'm gonna uh, suck all the dirty fluid out of that reservoir. Uh, obviously, I did a couple connectors, and uh, it was pretty pretty gross in there, so I got to do a little brake flush, I guess, too. All right, so I bled the reservoir, or sucked out the reservoir using that guy. Works great. Uh, one of the little grommets came with the reservoir, one stayed in. This was definitely replaced, like I thought. Those grommets look really new, so I'm not going to replace them. I just cracked the lines. It's an 11 millimeter uh, line wrench, and then just got them the rest of the way out easily with the regular 11 millimeter. So I'm gonna go get those two 13s and uh, pull this guy out. All right, so still I'm fighting with this bolt right here. This one's incredibly difficult to get. Um, I tried, as you can see, I got a million sockets, wrenches, three eighths, quarter drive, swivels, extensions. Um, but this guy, this is the winner for this job, 13 millimeter, and you sneak in just like that, that you can get it out. Let's see, yeah, that's, I mean, there, there it is. That's the problem. So there's not a lot of room to pull all that out of there. So I'm, I'm going to attempt to pull the internals of that out of it while it's in the car, but I imagine it's gonna be a challenge, um, but it has been done. So I know it can be done. The in, there's a giant spring in there, which is apparently a huge nightmare. It's gonna, you gotta put some retaining washers in those bolt holes to hold that in place, pull a screw out of the bottom. And then as you undo them, the thing just explodes out of there. So I'm thinking I'm gonna get a two by four prop up against this to push it in while I pull those bolts out. So uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, so I put in these, those are the original bolts from the master to the booster with some really uh, tough, thick washers that go on the uh, control arm bushings from like a mid 60s Chevy. So I had some of those kicking around. So it's holding that in. There's what's called a grub screw on the bottom of the booster. So I'm gonna pull out the, uh, the grub screw, which is what holds all of that stuff in, the uh, contents of that booster, and then start backing those, uh, those bolts out. And apparently that thing's gonna explode out of there with some force. So I cut up a three foot two by four, I'm going to, it might be too much in the way. I'm going to like try to use it to let the contents out slowly, some leverage. I don't know. I'll, I'll videotape it. It's, hopefully it's glorious either way. 
All right, so I don't really know if this is gonna come out well. Obviously, you're looking down. This is the booster. The grub screw I just pulled out. It's right down here. Um, I, yeah, I don't know how. I figured I'd try to videotape it just to see how it comes out. Um, I'm gonna try the two by four. I have a 3 8 air gun uh, with some extensions. I'm gonna try to just gun them off. They're not, sorry about that. Somehow, need to get the other one. Ooh, wow, wow. All right, this is it. Okay. Let me ditch this. I'm afraid for my eyes, I should have put on my protection. Yeah, it's, it's under pressure. Oh, fluid's just dumping on the ground. Holy shit, I cannot believe that worked. Well, it's not over yet. It's, there's still pressure there. Uh, doing okay, though. Hey! Uh, wow, okay. I'm glad I videotaped that. Uh, that wasn't bad. All right, so this is the assembly of the front body piece. You get four pieces. You get the spring, um, you get the flat washer, then there's the O-ring, and the, or the front body seal, they call it, and then the front cup. So if I'm lucky, this guy is our culprit right here, this O-ring. So I got a couple, so I'm gonna see uh, what size works and uh, go from there. Just making sure nothing got dislodged in there. It looks pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble. All right, so quick update. I've just got it back in there and started. Um, it's not impossible. It does kind of suck. Uh, what I did pretty much, I'm wearing you know a long sleeve thing. I balled up uh, this rag. I put my arm against it as leverage and using my palm, just crammed it in there as far as I could and then slid my fingers over to be able to start that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm six foot tall. I weigh a buck 60, I'm not super strong. It can be done. Um, just a little protection for your arm because, I mean, it's a lot. You got to watch out for that line. And just cram it, cram it in there with the palm of your hand. You can see where the circles were. It took a lot of attempts. And uh, that's it. All right. So the uh, cup is flush in there again. Um, there's one thing you can see under the push rod. There's a little square of light. That's a, a hole and there's a notch. You can sort of, you can actually see it. Well, I don't know if I can get my hand in there to point, but... There's a notch here in the metal, and that there's a tab under it. That has to line up perfectly because this is the grub screw that goes in underneath and locks it all in. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it. Okay, <clears throat> so day two, a.k.a. day three, because I didn't work on it yesterday because my back and back my legs were killing me. So the master cylinder... You can bench bleed it, but you're never getting it back in there with the intake manifold on with uh, with the reservoir on it. So I had to pretty much install it dry, sort of gravity bled it at the lines before I put the reservoir on. Loctited the bolts to the booster, threw it all together, noticed it started leaking again. And I, you know, if you can see my napkin down there, it's got a drip on it. I fired it up a couple times since then and um, Hit the brake a bunch. I actually have a really good brake pedal. The brakes are working very well, so hopefully the gravity bleeding was good. But uh, I can look under there with that mirror and see, you know, that notch under the booster at the seam of the master. It was wet and it was leaking. Um, however, since running it, you know, then shutting it off, hitting the brakes a bunch, running it, hitting the brakes a bunch, shutting it off, hitting the pedal a bunch, it doesn't seem like it's leaking now. So I'm wondering, you know, I put the new, I put the new O-ring on that body. Um, Oh, I lost the old one, sorry, um, or I threw it away. So the old one was obviously super fatigued. The new one was a lot thicker, so it actually, it was a little bit harder to get that body back in there. So what I'm thinking is, you know, I put that, uh, the booster body back in the booster, put it all together, and there wasn't a lot of fluid in there because it hadn't been running, it hadn't been pressurized, and the, the body cup sticks out about maybe, you know, an eighth of an inch from the booster. And then when you put the master on, it pushes it back a little bit. And I'm thinking that it disturbed the, the O-ring and that's why it started leaking. 
And then, so once I pressurized it and hit the pedal a bunch, maybe it seated the O-ring and now it's not leaking. So that's what I'm hoping, because um, otherwise it's all coming out again and the booster's getting sent out to be rebuilt. So hopefully this there did fix go. it. <clears throat> so I've been letting it sit for a while. Right there on that notch is where it's been leaking from, where it was leaking before. Um, and uh, I've been letting it sit and pumping the brakes and I don't see anything coming out of it. So I'm hoping I was right and just that that uh, new O-ring just had to seat in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put it together. I think uh, I think that's a wrap. About five or six hours and a dollar thirty-five. So not bad. Well, I just uh, took it out for a spin. Um, the, it's on a charger. The battery had died because I was trying to diagnose a parking light issue, which ended up being the uh, relay. Um, anyway, so the car sat for a while with a dead battery and uh, it wasn't leaking. The booster didn't leak. Um, so I just went out and drove it and uh, the brakes actually feel pretty good. Um, might bleed them anyway, uh, just to really flush out the system. Um, it definitely stops fine. Uh, and I just brought it back in and uh, it's not leaking at the booster. It's all dry. So I'm going to call that a win, um, which is great because, <laughs> you know, that would have been a fairly significant expense a new uh, a new hydraulic booster from fcp euro is 550 dollars a rebuilt one uh from jay stratton is uh a gentleman who uh, rebuilds these is about 300 um with the core or he'll rebuild yours for about a buck 30 and uh so this cost me a dollar and 35 cents and the uh, gas to go to go to napa and buy the o-ring which I believe was part number 727-2626. I'll uh, post the DIY link that I used um, for some tips for this, and that's where I got that part number. Um, and overall, it probably took five or six hours to rebuild it in the car uh, versus having to pull the whole thing out to rebuild or uh, to replace it, I guess. So overall, I think this uh, was pretty good. So hopefully this is helpful to somebody. I think they use the same or similar hydraulic boosters on like E24s and E20, E28s. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.